Well, hello there. My name is Joey and I have a whale of a tale to share with you. The tides are turning and summer is nearly here. We are so excited to share with you our upcoming series of whale classes. We have three different classes for you to choose from. This is our first Sculpt a Whale online class. Each kit comes with four colors of ditto, an oven baked clay, a set of instructions, and an online tutorial to guide you through making your very own whale. We love that you have the option to create from home. You can choose to have the kit directly delivered to your doorstep by ordering through 25cats.com or you can go to your studio website and check to see if they have the kit in stock. And one lucky viewer can enter to win their very own whale kit just by commenting below and tell us your very favorite whale fact. The winner will be chosen at random. Next, we have our Hello There Whale Planter Workshop. This one's for ages six to adult. You can come to the studio and create your very own whale container made from clay. Our instructors will guide you through the entire build from start to finish. Once you have built the container, you get to come back and glaze it after it's gone through its journey through the kiln. Third, we have our four week, one hour per week whale class. This class is really special because students get to work with a variety of mediums and materials to make whale themed artwork. By the end of the session, students will be bursting with whale facts and art knowledge. We can't wait. Register for our whale themed classes at 4cats.com. In preparation for our whale series of classes, I've asked my good friend Quiva to walk us through how to draw a whale. For this one, all you need is paper, pencil, eraser, and something to color with. Have fun making your whale and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, my name is Quiva, or you can call me Art Diva Quiva, and I'm here today to show you how to draw a whale. So we're going to use a few supplies that you might have at home. And we'll start off with a roll of tape, an eraser, always handy to have on standby, and a sketch pencil, so something like a B or 2B is good. Uh, we don't want to use anything too dark because we're going to be sketching a lot of shapes to get our base that, and we want to make sure that it's easy to erase afterwards. And then the star of our show, this really nice fine tip marker. So you'll see it has a really teeny tiny nib on top. Um, this is going to help us make some really nice detailed outlines. No big deal if you don't have one of these. You could also use another type of marker or maybe even a darker pencil. And then once we've drawn our whale, we're going to color in using our four cats colored pencils. And you can use whatever you have at home. So first we'll start off by drawing a circle. Um, I'm gonna center my roll of tape in the middle. And if you don't have a roll of tape, you could use maybe a glass or maybe a lid off something that you have at home. And before we sketch, it's really important to know that we're going to erase this afterwards. So we're gonna really lightly sketch inside. I'll go a little bit harder just so you can, you can see it clearly in the video. Okay, so here we have our circle and then I'm going to roughly mark off where the halfway point would be in the circle. This makes it easier for me to judge the proportions of what we'll be drawing. So just I'll know roughly my heart, my, <laughs> my head will start over here and the tail is going to finish up around here on this side. So having some markings helps me plan out my drawing before I add in those lovely details. So we have our circle. Now let's start building the shapes to create whale body. So I'm going to start off with a big oval, something along here. It was going to be kind of like a big egg shape. 
And remember, this is our sketching at the beginning. This is our practice. So don't worry if it's not perfect, if it's not exactly how you imagined it. We're just getting some shapes. So first, my larger egg shape, my oval, this will be the head. Then here in the middle, we're gonna make another oval, slightly smaller. Something like that. And then to taper it off, we're gonna add the tail here. We're gonna make a triangular shape like this. So it's just finishing where we made that line earlier on. Okay. So next we'll move on to the tail. So um, just above where we have this line, I'm gonna draw two circles the same size. Something like that. And then on top of this, we're going to draw a triangle, but I'm going to add a bit of a curve to the top. Something like this. Okay, so now we're going to start filling in the body, making it look a bit more like a whale instead of shapes. So at the base of this circle, I'm just gonna add a small curved line. And I'm gonna add another one over here. Okay, so great, our tail's connected to our body. And now we're gonna fill in the rest of the body a little bit more. So before I um, start with my pencil outlining, I'm gonna add a small triangle on top of this oval here. I think it's like a triangle with, imagine a soft nose on top. So something like this. Okay, and then now I'll just join, do one line along the bottom here and connect up all of the circles. Okay, and that joins the end of the triangle we made earlier. It's okay if they don't um, meet perfectly, just remember sketching is all about practicing and we're gonna outline it in a few minutes anyway. So just help you get that sh roof shape there is really good. And then lastly, up at the top. So with this line, we're going to curve it and join these two circles and then it will meet the tail. So I'm gonna start here. Here we go, something like that. And now we're ready to add the fins, the flippers. <laughs> So first off, we'll start where these two circles join and I'm just gonna make another oval shape. Something like that. And to add some depth, we'll add another um, oval up here, smaller. Okay. Um, and now we'll add kind of a small point to the end of those, just to make them look a bit more like whale's fins so something kind of an un uneven triangle at the end something like that okay and now we'll roughly plan out where we'll have the uh, facial details for the whale so just around here I'm so we have our triangle and then about not halfway a little bit lower down I'm gonna start and draw almost like a little smile for our whale something like that and with lots of animals and when we're drawing in general we'll add the face kind of up here at the top for whales their eyes are actually down here a little bit so not right at the fin a little bit over somewhere around here so i'm gonna add the eye and then we'll just go around the eye and then join this line up to the fin okay and then on the other side of the fin you can see this kind of worked out with the circle anyway but Around here where the fin ends, I'm gonna just draw another line and make sure that it tapers off to the end of the tail. So this is gonna be the belly and this part also kind of going up to the, the chin of the whale over here. Um, get, we'll add some really nice uh, striped details there too. 
And next, our whale's all done, looking good. Next, we're gonna add details here. So our whale that we're drawing today, uh, we're using our imagination. This one I imagine is like um, almost kind of a dreamy whale. <laughs> so we're not making a realistic underwater scene. I'd like it to be almost like a dream. So we're gonna have a nice night sky in the background inside our circle. So first we'll start off with some clouds. So I like to just kind of random shapes and just make a little, um, an arch shape. You can overlap it a little bit too to give it a bit of depth, something like this. I like when they trail off and, and start bigger and then get a little bit smaller, but you can use your artist eye and um, add your own details as, as you think looks good, as you see fit. So um, added in the clouds and next we're going to make a really nice crescent moon. So I have a very handy trick for this. Sometimes when you try and draw a crescent moon, so like a C shape, it's hard to get the two points to, to be even, to line up properly. So a handy trick for that is we'll just draw a circle and then inside draw another smaller circle. And when we outline, I'll show you how to make that into a crescent moon. You probably have a good idea already. Next, we'll get to add some nice stars. So I really like adding the details of these stars are part of that. So there's a few different ways you can draw stars. And um, a lot of us know the way where we draw kind of uh, this way, which is uh, really nice. That's you've probably mastered that already. Another way that I like to draw stars is if we draw kind of a long T shape and then you curve a line in, curve a line in, going to each strand. And here we have a really nice star that's almost kind of like the North Star. Another way that we can do a fun, simple way is just doing small kind of almost like an asterisk, just with some lines. Now these are really nice to fill in some gaps. And then last, my favorite is if we create some negative space. So I'm going to draw a circle, small circle with my pencil, and then create some lines coming out of that that are different lengths. Something like that. So you have a few different styles. You can pick your favorite or do a mix of all, whatever you think um, looks good. And now that we have drawn our base, we're ready to start outlining. So before we start outlining, I'm going to just have a quick look at my whale and see is there anything that I want to just tweak or anything I want to add before I start outlining. So one thing I noticed is that this line here, it's fine, but I'd like to make it just a bit more of a nice kind of curve to it, a bit more of a flow. So I'm just going to get my pencil and sketch. There we go. And I think that will be, um, we'll just have a nicer flow to it. So finished my final touches and now I'm going to use my fine tip pen. So I like to start from left to right because I'm right-handed. Whatever works for you is great. And now we outline. So first I'm just going to outline pretty much all of the shapes that I created when I was sketching and then we'll start adding the details. Okay, so our whale's done. <laughs> now remember, we're not outlining this circle here. Uh, if you really think, if you'd really like to, I would suggest waiting till 
seeing how it turns out at the very end. And then you can decide if you'd like to add an outline. But for the moment, we're going to not outline the circle part here and just focus on all these lovely details, the stars and the moon and the clouds. Great, so for the stars, I'm just outlining these, um, the mini stars, just as normal. For the for this one, our North Star type star that we drew, um, I'm just gonna outline the outside. So I know that we had some sketch marks inside to act as a guide for us when we were um, plotting out this design, but we're gonna just focus on the outside. This is a pretty cool trick too, because it looks like you just freehand this, so <laughs> well done. Um, <clears throat> Next, I'm going to add a star on here. So with this one, we'll just, again, outlining the outside. Something like this. And then next, for this star, which we drew the pencil circle in the middle and then created our lines outside. We won't fill in the middle. We'll just uh, use this as our guide again to draw stars outside. all around the edge like so and then last but not least we'll come to our moon so remember we did draw two circles earlier um, as a handy trick to help us get a really nicely proportioned moon but right now we're not going to just fill in the two circles again because then it won't look like a moon <laughs> so to make that really nice shape we're going to trace almost all of the circle but leave a small gap inside and trace along the outside so go nice and slow and there we have our crescent moon so something like this we're just leaving a tiny gap here that makes the nice illusion of the crescent moon okay great and now we're ready to start um, to erase those lines this is one of my favorite parts it's pretty magic and then we'll start coloring in so pop the cap on there and then I'll start to erase. So we'll go nice and slow. Ooh. For the moment, we'll leave, uh, we'll erase this lightly. I think even when you erase it, you can still see it very roughly. So um, it still acts as a nice guide for us. So I'm gonna erase that. Don't worry if you can still see some pencil lines because we are going to be coloring in as well. So uh, no big deal. So we have our outlining all done. Next step is to start our cross hatching. So I'm just going to tidy away these uh, materials I'm done using. Organized desk is organized mind, and um, and with cross hatching, you can do it in a couple of different ways. So, if you're drawing something really realistic, you might have a really great gradient with your cross hatching. It could start very light and get really dark. Today, we're going to add it to add depth, but also we're having fun. This is more of an, it's not realistic, it's more of an illustration style drawing. So we're just doing it to add some texture and some interesting um, depth and different areas, drawing attention to different areas in our drawing. So I'm just going to start adding my lines here. So hatching is when it's one line and cross hatching is when you Crossing on top. <laughs> this kind of looks like this. So often people do a mixture. So you can decide what you think looks good. You could do um, some hatching in some areas and some cross hatching in others. So to make it look even darker or like there's a darker shadow, you can place the lines really close together and cross hatch them really closely on top.
And then this is really um, neat and tidy, but we want to maybe make it a bit more interesting. So I'm going to add more cross hatching here <clears throat> so that it's not all too uniform or too even just because in nature nothing is really quite like that. And then I'm going to add some more cross hatching under here. So you can have fun with it. You can go a bit more quick and sketchy or you can really take your time and enjoy adding all those really nice, lovely details. Up to you. And maybe I'll add a little bit up here as well, why not? This is a really fun time where you can really tap into your own artistic expression and decide what you think looks really good. So I'm gonna add maybe a little bit down here. I think I'll just do some hatching down here instead of the full cross hatching. Maybe a little bit on this fin too, it's feeling lonely, okay. And then some here maybe. If you make a mistake, if it's a bit wobbly like mine is there, you can just turn your hatching into cross hatching and no one will know. <laughs> okay. All right. And don't worry if you feel like this looks a bit plain because we're going to add um, some depth there with our coloring pencils very soon. So here's the fun part with the outlining. Um, or So here's the fun part with filling in our stars. You have a couple different options. You could leave them as they are, or if you wish, we can add some lines inside. And then fill in every second line. If you've got a really great eye, you can do it with hatching or you could just do it with black, depending how big your star is, I suppose, if you can fit. And then this gives it a cool depth. And then for the star, we can do something similar. Just add some lines and add a little bit of depth there. Okay. And then for the clouds, I really like adding, choosing Kind of a direction where I'd like the light to go. So this is a dreamy illustration that we're making, but just to keep some continuity in there, <clears throat> it's nice to have a light source in mind. So I'm just gonna say that this is the shadow I'm gonna have. So we don't want to have a shadow here, and then on this cloud the shadow's on this side, and it can be a bit confusing if we do that. It's hard to know. So I'm just gonna add a couple lines here. there mm. okay and then the same on this side okay So now you can have a look and see, is there anything else that you'd like to add a bit more detail to or anywhere else you'd like to maybe add a star to? I think I could do with one over here. I think that would look good. Okay. Um, all right, now we're ready to add some color. So today we're gonna use some 4Cats color pencils. Um, I'm gonna use a few different colors. I love new art supplies, so pop this off. Great. Um, so I'm going to start off, I need some gray also a kind of lighter blue dark blue some yellow probably some white to add some highlights as well and then maybe one of these darker kind of purpley tones might be nice as well okay leave that over there in case i need anything else so first i'm going to start off with um, adding in some gray onto the belly So when I'm using my um, pencils, I like to, almost as if you're drawing lots of tiny circles and this starts, stops you from getting some really kind of harsher lines in there than you need. So I'm using light pressure, drawing some small circles, and trying to make sure I don't have any white spaces in there. 
So I'm gonna fill in the whole thing with one um, kind of layer of grey. And then I'm gonna go back in wherever we have our cross hatching and add in some more so we get some really nice depth. Okay, so I have one layer done. And then next I'm gonna add in another layer, still doing that same technique, drawing some small circles. Or most of the time, sometimes you need to give a little push, that's okay. <laughs> and then going over, using a bit more pressure, going over wherever we have the cross hatching. And you can blend it out a little bit. You can go a bit further if you don't wanna have a really harsh line. So in under the eye, near the flipper. Filling it all in. You can see how the cross hatching really adds a lot of a lot of depth. I'm not really adding too much. Um, oh, I'm not pushing very hard with the pencil, but it still looks so much darker than the rest because we have that area of shading there. And a little bit down here near the tail. Okay. And then while I have the grey, I'm also going to add some depth to our clouds. Same thing, just adding it where we have the cross hatching and then blending it out a little bit further. Now you can see that we don't have a set beginning and end of the clouds. If you'd like to, you can add one, but I like to leave it so that it's a bit, um, we can decide and we can let the clouds fade into the sky. So we have a couple of different options there. So now I'll do the same here. Okay, so we're done with gray for the moment. And then next we're going to start to fill in the whales. So I'm gonna use this kind of medium shade blue. Oh, actually, I think I might have one that's maybe a bit, there we go. Yeah, so you can see this is the one I had, but I think I'm gonna use something a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go with this one instead. <clears throat> you can choose whichever you prefer. So you can see these are really nice new art supplies, but when you try and color in with a really sharp point, sometimes it can give you a kind of noticeable lines. So if you've new art supplies, like you, you can use it sideways like this to give you really nice uh, blend. And this also gives you some cool textures too. So not pushing too hard, just like with the gray, we're gonna start with uh, one base of blue all over. Oh, okay. This is so relaxing. Okay, so now I have my base of blue and next we're going to add more depth. So um, this is adding darker patches just to make it look more, um, just, it looks more interesting and also gives more of a 3D appearance. So just like before, I'm going to go in with a bit more pressure anywhere that we have added our cross hatching. So around here at the tail and you can always go a little bit further than the cross hatching if you want to give it a nice blend so that it doesn't look like a big circle of dark. Um, colors you can like blend it in. I really love blending so it's nice to challenge yourself try and do the best blending ever.
Okay, we're all finished our whale. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to the sky. So our clouds are done, and now I'm gonna grab some yellow and fill in those stars. And the moon too, of course. Going slow. I like to do kind of a small circle outside these ones. This doesn't have that kind of glow effect. So just go a bit wider, add some yellow there. Okay. And then this one, you can do a couple different ways. You can draw lines or maybe just keep with that nice blending. Look at you. And now we are ready to add the sky. So I have this nice dark blue, kind of stormy color. So let's see, I think again, this is really nice and new. So it might give me a, well, actually that's not so good. okay. Oh, I forgot my star here. Let me grab some more yellow. <laughs> Make sure you get all those stars. Okay. Ta -da. Okay. <laughs> so now we'll, fill in the sky so just like before all one color I will fill in the gaps first and then we'll talk a little bit more about what to do around the stars and uh, at the clouds as well So as we get to the top, remember that we're not going to draw an outline, we're going to just keep going with that circular motion and have a really nice soft edge. I'll show you why really soon, it's one of our final details. So I find if you have anywhere that it looks, you can see like the back and forth kind of marks from your pencil. You can always go back and just do lots of this circular motion on top and it really helps to smooth those, um, smooth out those lines. So now we have our good base down um, and we're going to um, start adding some more depth. So just like before, just circular motions and uh, leaning a little bit harder on the pencil. So we don't have any cross hatching in the sky, so you can just add some depth wherever you feel like it would work, wherever you think would look good. I like to go somewhere where we have maybe a bit more space. So right here, there's a bit of a, bit of a gap. There's nothing there, so I'm gonna Add some darker pencil and blend out that nice circular motion. Here. I'm trying not to draw too much into the clouds, but I felt like that needed a little bit of pop of color over here. Okay. And then maybe around blue, Make some nice contrast.
Okay, so we're all finished coloring in and now we get to add the final details. Okay, so now we're ready for the final details. Ooh, this is one of my favorite parts. So what we're going to do is, right now we have our whale and we want to make it look like a humpback whale. So we're gonna add some um, nice fine lines here, some details to really accentuate his, um, that nice kind of, I'm not sure what would you call it, a chin? <laughs> um, just so we know what kind of thing it is. So I'm gonna go slow. Number one. Just let it fade into the tail, and then you can keep going. So now you can see if there's anywhere that you want to add extra details. I'm going to maybe add a line here. Um, maybe some more hatching on that. Okay. And maybe a little bit just here at the tip. Maybe just a little bit. Some hatching. Okay. And then maybe just yeah, wherever you think it looks good. So here with my lines, I kind of found it a bit tricky to keep it exactly straight. So and I'm just going to overline there, overlap it a bit, and then I'm going to add maybe a bit more hatching to the belly. That will help disguise it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Mm, so cross hatching. Okay. You can re-outline anywhere you want to define a little bit. I like to just do small areas, just maybe making the lines slightly darker, just so it stands out. Okay, and then once you're happy, oh, maybe we'll add a little bit of. And then last but not least, we're gonna add um, some lines around the outside of our circle just to make it look even more dreamy. So I'm just gonna do lines of alternating lengths, kinda like short, long, short, long. And then follow around that curve. And this is just kind of a fun design, something different. It's pretty hard to draw a perfect circle on the edge, but if you did want to, you could always use whatever you use to trace that circle in the beginning, and you could use that as your guide. Okay. And now we're all finished. The whale is done. So thank you so much for joining us today, learning how to draw a whale, and we'll see you in the next video.